Hi, and welcome to Paw Prints on the Mountain, brought to you by the Humane Society of the White Mountains. I'm your host, Mike Bosley. In just a couple moments, we'll meet Dina, the Dina Pace, the Executive Director of the Humane Society, and also Stacy, who's the manager of the Doghouse Thrift Shop, which is pretty much the bread and butter of the Humane Society. So we'll get to those in just a couple, to those ladies in just a couple of moments. But before we do, we're going to go into a little segment called Bosley's Pet Peeves. Now this little segment, it's not the opinion of the board, it's not the opinion necessarily of the Humane Society, it's just me talking to you. So Punxsutawney Phil said that we're going to have an early spring. Personally, I don't believe the weatherman, more or less a weatherman that lives in the ground. <laughs> but if you do, spring is on the way. In fact, there's signs of spring all over the place. Uh, there's irises coming up in my flower bed. St. Patty's Day is right around the corner. Uh, the days are getting longer. The birds are chirping earlier in the morning. But most importantly, you get that whole time to do some spring cleaning. Now, spring cleaning can involve that shoe closet that how in the heck did you really get a full closet of shoes? I've never understood that, but it happens. Now, I'm not one to tell you where to or not to donate, but I will tell you where I do donate and where I shop. And that, of course, is the Doghouse Thrift Shop. In fact, I picked this up just a couple days ago there at the Doghouse Thrift Shop, and I think it looks pretty darn decent. Now, I would like to tell you, here's a suggestion as you're spring cleaning. Usually, and it's even happened in my circle of friends, hey, we're just going to take this stuff and just go donate it to that other place. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to tell you where to or not to donate, but think about this. Instead of making one gigantic pile, make two piles. Put one pile, the better stuff, the less used stuff, the stuff that's going to fetch more money and really help the animals of the Humane Society the best. Doesn't give all the garbage and all the other stuff. That can go in another pile and Feel free, take that to the other place, do with <laughs> as you will. But more importantly, take the good stuff to the Humane Society. Now, there's two things that belong on the curb. That is, A, your trash, and B, your ex. And your ex <laughs> could actually be considered trash. So we'll just say trash <laughs> belongs there on the curb. Donations for the Humane Society do not belong on the curb. If for chance you left them there overnight, somebody can just drive by and take them. And then that stuff that you wanted to help the animals never gets to the right hands so it can help save lives. So please make sure, make that nice two piles, take the good one to the doghouse thrift shop, and more importantly, take it there during the correct hours. And so with that, I'm going to lead into Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Mike. So how does the process for intake work? Is there like certain, how, what, describe how this goes for we us. We do. We have a donation um, processing center around the back side of the doghouse. Okay. We are open from 10 to 4.30 accepting donations. Um, oftentimes on uh, after hours, somebody will drop off a donation, maybe at the front door, might get stolen. Right. You leave it after hours out back, it still may be stolen, but oftentimes weather gets on it or we oh. have crazy cats outside that just run around and pee on stuff. <laughs> stuff gets bad if you leave it outside. <laughs> if we're not there to accept it, we'd rather you don't leave it. Right. Because it could benefit another place that might be accepting donations, although we would like it. Hold it and wait until we can accept it from 10 to 4.30, Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday through Saturday. And in the, the summer, um, starting in April, Dina? May. May. We will be open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 4.30. We'd be happy, happy to take the donations. It's, it's best if we're there to accept it. We can also give you a receipt. Right, right. And, and we, you know, your, your items are not stolen or ruined because of weather or animals or whatever. And that's what I feared. I, when I'd seen <clears throat> some, some packages left there on your door, and it was obviously not a package from UPS. Right. Um, I, that's what I felt is someone could steal this and this would not help our animals that need our help. Right. Um, so 
Is there any particular items, say this time of year, spring, as people are cleaning stuff out that you guys really look for, you need, or you just need it all in general? We need it all in general. Okay. In general. But keep in mind, if you can't sell it at your yard sale, we can't sell it either. That's an extremely valid and point. it costs us to get rid of it. Oh, really? If we can't sell it. We have to make dump runs sometimes. Oh, that makes sense. Well, hopefully the two piles will help separate exactly. what can be sold than the other guys. Exactly. Exactly. Now, as spring's coming up, there's also a lot of things. We'll shift to you, Dina. Um, let's see. Spring is really big for Arizona Gives, right? It is. <laughs> so, Arizona Gives is the biggest, it's a 24-hour online giving day. And Arizonans can choose which nonprofits they want to donate to that day that have signed up through Arizona Gives. So we actually put out our information yesterday. Okay. So it'll have a link that'll take you straight to the Arizona Gives website and our page on there. So Arizona Gives is on April 2nd. Okay. For 24 hours. April 2nd. Mark your calendars. April 2nd. Tell Siri to make an alarm or your smartphone to do whatever. But here's the better part. Starting March 4th, you can pre-schedule your donations. So by pre-scheduling them also, it throws us into different categories where we could win more money for the most pre-scheduled donations in our rural area. Last year, that brought us $2,500 for winning the most pre-scheduled donations in our area. And then wow. we won another $1,500 in prize money for something else. So $4,000 extra in money came last year. So last year we were just under $30,000, 26 to $30,000 because of that one day 24 hour giving. Wow. And that's huge to these yeah. homeless animals. Um, we also have a great anonymous donor that has um, offered to match the first $5,000. Okay. So say you give ten dollars, that's turned into twenty dollars. Wow! You give a hundred, that's two hundred. You give five hundred, it's a thousand because of this anonymous donor. So this is, it, and it gets very exciting because on on that day, for that twenty four hours, I mean, you're on the computer because you get these <laughs> little notices, donation, donation, and, you know, and it's it's amazing how generous people are to our cause. You know, Mike, the work that we do at the Humane Society each and every day would just amaze people to really know what we do. So this year we've redesigned our Arizona Gives program a little bit and, and people will be getting an email if you choose from us twice a week and then we're going to post more often on Facebook some of these great stories. So if you're not following us on Facebook already, do and you can follow us on the Doghouse Facebook also because we're going to post some stories over there of the animals that come in. You know, and, and we welcome these animals into the Humane Society family. Right. Because it is a big family. You know, we're all family, the, the employees, the volunteers, the, the people and the animals that are affiliated with us. It's a family thing. Oh, yeah. You know, and so we're going we're gonna to share some great success stories that we've had this last year. And because of donors donating for, for this cause, we're able to continue our work this year. So we can help more animals. And, you know, like you had said at the beginning, our doghouse thrift shop is our everyday income. Right. You know, that money goes over to the, to the shelter every day to support these homeless animals. Which is not cheap. I know that number, you've said it once before, and that was last year's number because right. my bills went up this year. Right. I'm sure right. yours did. Last year we were, we were just under $1,800 a day to keep our organization open. So Arizona Gives doesn't even really fund a full month of the shelter's operation. It's close. It's close. But wow. you know what? And, and people say, you know, I, I don't have money. I can't help. You can. Every dollar helps. You know, if, if 10 people gave $5. That's 50 bucks. Exactly. You know, and 50 bucks will buy a couple bags of dog food or, right. or a, you know, close to a tray of vaccinations so that we can vaccinate up to 25 animals. Mm -hmm. Things like that. You know, people don't realize the expenses in these. And, and by going on and joining us with the Arizona Gives, mm -hmm. there's a breakdown of what it costs, you know, for our vaccines and all that kind of stuff because every animal gets vaccines from the time they hit our incoming. Wow. So they already start getting those we vaccines. We have to well, yeah, for, for, for our animals that are already safety. there. 
for their safety and for the safety of the ones coming in. So, and, and in, our, in our world, it's different than in, you know, your personal pets at home, my personal pets, Stacy's. There, we have to vaccinate our animals every two weeks to help prevent disease until they're a certain age and we have, have got them, you know, through all that vaccinations. So in a sad, perfect world, uh, let's say you had a dog incoming and that dog didn't find its forever home for two months, you've had to give that dog four different vaccinations. That's exactly right. If they're under a year old, we have. Wow. Absolutely. That's got a cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And, and people don't realize that. I did some figures um, getting ready for the Arizona Gives Day. And we took in 1,231 animals last year. Oh. <clears throat> so breaking down our expenses on that, that was $538 and some change per animal. Wow. wow. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. And I'm even prouder to say with the statistics that we've come up with that our live release rate for uh, 2018 was 94%. Now, that's a funny... That's a funny statistic. Obviously, 94% is, is huge. Is. But there's a way that the society has twisted some very important words based around shelters. Yes. Could you kind of explain that to everybody out in TV land, what it really means to be or not to be a no-kill shelter? Okay, so... And, and just like you with your personal rant, I'm going to say this is my personal opinion, okay? Okay. So my personal opinion is, I don't want to ever say we're a no-kill if there's any euthanasia going on. Okay. Part of our euthanasia is we do it as a service to the public. We only euthanize if there is a disease outbreak that could wipe out our whole community of animals. Okay, okay. rabies or something to that extent. Rabies, distemper, parvo. Oh, yeah. Because we have nowhere to quarantine this stuff. Okay. Okay. Or if their quality of life is so bad, they're suffering. Makes sense. You know, they've got cancer. We can't fix them. Right. You know? And so, so for a long time, our community had this bad outlook of us um, because of euthanasia. Years and years ago, there was a lot of euthanasia. We were the only place up here, you know? And um, <clears throat> we're not that place. We haven't been that place for years, you know? We just adopted a dog in December that was with us for 896 days. Right. So, Never euthanized. Always a right. hope that you're going to find that's that right. forever home. That's right. And, and so anyway, my point is st the, the statistics or the standards in, in the no-kill world is anything over 90% live release rate, you are considered a no-kill. So by letter of the law, which this day and age politicians trip over all day long you could we if could. you wanted to you could classify the humane society as a no-kill shelter correct but you also are a real world person and you understand i'm, I'm a goes. real world person i'm a real world person we will be back in just a moment now that we all are on the same page that hey lots of life saving going on there at the humane society we'll be back in just a moment with a couple words from our sponsors stay tuned we've got more great dog stories coming up in just a moment And welcome back to Paw Prints on the Mountain. I'm your host, Mike Bosley. Of course, Paw Prints on the Mountain is brought to you by the Humane Society of the White Mountains. Once again, let me remind you, as the Arizona Gives comes up, you can pre-order your donation now, or when the day comes, take care of it. Make sure and please put your donations there towards the Humane Society of the White Mountains. We are going to make this year a record-breaking year. Thank you to you. Also, thank you to that anonymous donor who's going to match the first 5,000. So please don't hesitate. Please help give. Also, speaking of giving, um, there has been some volunteers. You know, volunteers come and go throughout the years. We did have some very dear, dear volunteers that have 
moved on to doing some other things with their lives. Uh, if they're watching, we greatly appreciate your service so very much. Thank you for helping save lives. Of course, if you're not those people, then you should be volunteering and helping save lives. So maybe one day I can thank you. Who knows? Now, welcome. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hello. All right, so we've got Dina Pace, the executive director. We've got Stacy, you are the manager there at the Doghouse Thrift Shop. Correct. So what kind of uh, hot stuff you got going on hot for spring? Stuff. For spring, well, we're trying to clear out our, we've got this big snow storm. We've got snowstorms coming and we'll be having, um, trying to clear out all of our, our ski specials, our ski jackets, our skis. Um, that will be going through March. Okay. Um, the first weekend in every month, we will have 25% off everything in the store. Everything. The very first weekend. So from the door front to the door back is going to be all on sale. Everything. And out the side doors into the barn, huh? And every, everything we have is on sale. And if, 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 if you don't think it's for sale, ask. Everything's got a price. Okay. <laughs> we'll, sell, we'll sell the carpet. No. <laughs> if it'll feed an animal, I'll sell it. There you go. And we always do get a freak snowstorm in the middle of May, so pick yes. up ski stuff yeah, just absolutely. in case. You yeah. never know. Um, what else you got going on there? Um, we will have our camping gear out. Okay. Yeah, it we is. We have a lot of time. camping gear, um, tents, uh, coolers. My goodness, we have so many coolers. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, sleeping bags, um, hiking backpacks. That time of spring coming into summer weather, everybody's starting to get out, hike. Right. We've got hiking boots. We have whatever you need, water shoes. We now, a lot. I did, as I said, I was in there and I got this nice little shirt, which I will actually donate back to you at the end of the show. I left the price Love tag that. on it. You don't even Aww. have to. You can just. <laughs> recycle that donation nice. um it was actually you had a like set up where there was a little guy's boutique where it had some of the nicer jeans and some nicer shirts and then you had the racks the hat like this was just well thought out and then the employee who had no idea who i was came over uh nicely and asked if there was something i was looking for she wasn't pushy but i didn't feel distant it was all in all just a great interaction good Good. I'm glad to hear that. We have a we have a great crew that is willing to help any way that we can. It, it, Every single one of us. To, if there's something you're looking for, if you come into the store, please ask. We may have it in back stock. Oh, that's right. Because you've got you've got a room full of stuff in the back. We have a warehouse. So ask. And, okay, yes. that makes a lot of sense. I never even thought of that. I just figured all the stuff was already out on the floor. Sometimes we just you know we put everything out that we have. And there might be a certain brand or a certain type or a certain dish that you're looking for that we may have in back stock that we have not been able to bring out yet. And everybody in that store, employees are very aware of what we have on the floor yep. and what we have in back stock. You can call me at any time on the phone, ask me if I have anything. If I don't know, somebody else there is going to know. And we yep. can let you know. That is a great right. feeling. That, I'm, I'm very impressed when I go in there and, and if I see somebody go, do you have, and they'll go, we do have out in the warehouse, you know? So by processing this stuff, and that's why it's so important to have your donations, even though we're open there from 10 to five, they accept the donations 10 to 4.30, uh -huh. so they can get them in before the end of the day. And, and while you're processing, I mean, they're so awesome about knowing everything they have, you know, and where it's at in that warehouse, so. I'm, I'm really impressed with the organization and all the hard work that goes on over there. There's nothing more frustrating than walking into any store and going, hey, do you have this? And you get that cold blank look of, <laughs> uh, maybe it would be in that corner over there. Yeah. So that's phenomenal that your employees have that level of customer service that they know exactly what's going on and where what is. So. Yes, and we do, we do. It's, it's, it's a crew effort. But we're, we make a great crew and we all, if one of us doesn't know, we get on the radio and we ask another until we get the answer. Now you're saying that you do have a lot of intake stuff. So is there um, room for volunteers to help with intake stuff? 
always room for volunteers. <laughs> <Okay>. Always room. <laughs> yes. No hesitation there. You know, we love our volunteers. We oh can't do what we do without our volunteers. Uh, yes. 100%. Yeah. I believe that. And, and one of the, the most important things that people can give to us is their time. You know, time is precious. And when you choose to give it to help the homeless animals at the Humane Society, just know how really and truly grateful we are. Now, the Humane Society is always growing, changing, adapting, and thanks to your wonderful success there at the Doghouse Thrift Shop, uh, I do see reports, I, I do see you're doing very well. Um, it's thanks to that sort of stuff that you, Dina, can do some improvements there in the shelter itself. Yes. And so I, I'm so excited about the projects that we are just finishing up. And, uh, you know, we, we built the new training center, meeting room, um, education room last, building last year. And we needed to do some, some remodel in the older part of the shelter where the animals are to make things a little better for them. So <clears throat> thanks to volunteers also, we've gotten doors fixed um, so that we're not wasting electricity or you know the heat and everything and and so it's a warmer establishment for the animals we've insulated a building where the animals are fully insulated it now and it's so much warmer in there i mean it's amazing wow and so we've also done a remodel where where the old office area used to be uh-huh and what we've done is we've actually moved we've put in a hallway so that now when you come in from the from the new front office and you're going to see the dogs you don't have to zigzag around some things and come out a door it's a straight hallway and this is the exciting part i'm so excited this is the part that's <laughs> not quite done because we're waiting on windows so right to the right of, on this hallway there's a door there where our open range cat rooms are uh-huh so we are we are putting in two five foot windows Oh, wow. and, and there'll be shelves and things on the other side so the cats can sit and watch the people walking by. Uh -huh. And then uh, we've, we've remodeled the back part where there's shelves for our supplies. And there is, this is the biggest exciting thing. We now have an indoor dog bathing tub just like the groomers have. Wow, which I'm sure during the summer outdoors may not be at all that bad, but come the winter, an indoor tub is extremely... Amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> you bet. You know, and, and we've expanded the bathroom area and put in a shower that, that was desperately needed because say we do have a disease outbreak, we want to be able to get our staff, we want them to be able to get showered off immediately so that they don't contaminate the rest of the shelter and also so they're not worried about taking anything home to their pets. Right. You know, so we have a shower there in case of an emergency and we need to get showered. You know, the employees need to be able to shower. But this bathing tub is something huge for us because, you know, we have animals come to us all year round and so many of them will come with ticks or fleas and stuff. And so we have to do these dips and picking and, and this tub, and, and it's in an area where it's warm and, and it's just so, I, this has been a dream of ours for a long time. And then we put down new flooring in those areas. You know, our floor was all chipping apart. And so then we've done that. We're making repairs to the kennels for the dogs. And then we're getting ready to paint the whole sections where the dogs are. Ooh. So the dogs are going to have a fresh new look at things too. Okay. So this is all exciting stuff, but it's thanks to the donations that people help us with. And by shopping and donating to our doghouse thrift shop that make these things possible. Well, so that brings up a point. Uh, spring break is right this month around the corner. St. Patty's Day. Um, <laughs> so make sure there's lots of things to do during spring break, such as read to the dogs. Absolutely. I mean, there's all things of all ages. Yes. And you just demonstrated that you don't necessarily have to do something with an animal to volunteer. Absolutely not. You had... You're going to need painters pretty soon. Yeah. Anybody can move a paintbrush. And yeah. uh, let's see, you need people to help intake at the doghouse thrift right. shop. So there's lots of jobs that anybody, so anybody can find a way to volunteer there. At the Absolutely. And then once, once spring gets a little bit more settled with us, you know, and the, the ground's a little harder and not so full of snow or mud, you know, we've got cleanups at both locations. 
You know, we need to rake up pine needles. We need right. to clean gutters. We need, you know, there's all kinds of things that we need to, to clean and, and make the grounds look good and ready for nice and spring. And nice and ready for Arizona Gives. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. Big help. Absolutely. That, that, that Arizona Gives, it, it's the Alliance of Arizona, which is a nonprofit that puts this on every year. And this is just an amazing thing. You know, so many people seem to think that the Humane Society, because we say Humane Society of the White Mountains, is a with the Humane Society of the United States or the ASPCA and they go oh we donate every month and you send us these nice t-shirts that's not us you know unfortunately that's a big organization that it's a, I'm not saying anything bad that's a great organization to donate to but I just want you to know it's not getting to us right and and we don't give you t-shirts because we can't afford it we're too busy <laughs> spending the money on the animals you know that, that that are in our care the necessities yeah and even the extra little things like a grazing shelf to watch the humans as they walk by <laughs> exactly you know <laughs> things to make these guys you know because the, the sad thing is they all most all of them come from a home and they come in probably i think debbie figures 75 percent of our animals come in as strays that no one comes looking for. Oh, that's and devastating. It is devastating. And the, and the ones that are heartbreaking are the older dogs. Right. You know, for whatever reason, they're with us. And we will keep them until we find them that perfect forever home. One of my goals and, and dreams before um, I retire someday is to find like a hospice for older animals to go to you know, hospice homes, you know, so we're going to, and, and that's a form of volunteer, the fostering. But, right. but we would love to be able to, if someone's interested in doing that kind of stuff for us, I want to talk to you. We need you, okay. you know, and, and that way some of our older dogs that may have months or even years left, they can finish it in a home and, with love. And comfortable. And yes. You know, our, our facility is not a bad facility, you know, they're loved and they're cared for but it's still a shelter. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us this week. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, Stacy. I appreciate you. you coming in, spending busy time away from the Doghouse Thrift Shop. What day is Arizona Gives again? April? Second. Second, okay, good. I you can start pre-scheduling March 4th, your okay. donations. All right, so go pre-schedule or we'll see you on April 2nd. Check with the Humane Society, see if there's any volunteer opportunities that would work for you. Of course, thank you ladies. Everybody, till we see you next time, I'm Mike Bosley, and thanks for joining us on Paw Prints on the Mountain.